Hey everyone, good to be back on the channel. Sorry I haven't posted in a while. I am actually on my way to the airport right now for build out number five. Uh, this week we'll be going to Columbus, Ohio. I always say we, uh, it isn't me, it's just me, but I'm gonna be going to Columbus, Ohio to do the build. It is actually a consulting client who I've been working with for a little while now. Uh, I think they signed up sometime in December. So, weren't in a huge rush to get their store open, but finally found them a great spot and they got a great deal on their lease. So now we're at the point where we actually have to build the store out and get them open for business. <clears throat> My flight is leaving here at 10 p.m. out of Seattle and going to be landing in Columbus at 6 a.m. So <clears throat> If you guys don't know, or if you haven't seen any of my other build-out videos, my wife's a nurse, so she works Sunday, Monday, Tuesdays every week, and that makes it where you know I leave Tuesday night and come back Saturday night, and it just gives me enough time to do the builds and works out for the both of us. I don't do these every week, I just kind of do them as needed. So right now it's just for consulting clients I do the build-outs for, I don't do them for anyone else. It just <clears throat> makes sense for me, and I, I don't want to overload my plate, which is kind of overloaded right now regardless because I got, you know, taking care of my store, hired just hired our newest employee, and have the software which is about 60% complete, and it's just, it's a lot to juggle, and we're doing the build-outs and consulting and all that stuff, so... Uh, that's why I just limit it to build out customers, or sorry, consulting customers only. Uh, but yeah, that's why I fly. I always do Tuesday night flights. It's not awesome. I don't typically sleep on the plane, but <clears throat> typically by the time I get there, I, you know, I'm pretty excited to get going on the build and everything's there. And it is, it is fun every time I do it. So this is my fifth one. I didn't get any really good content from the last build in Louisiana but uh, it was the first build that felt like it was like fully complete. The, the store owner was really good and got everything ordered and there well before I got there. Didn't miss any of the items on the purchase order list, so it made my life a lot easier. We actually ended up having a lot of returns because we kind of swapped her floor plan when I got there and got to see the actual space and whatnot. So um, that one went really well. I'll definitely include some pictures here right now to show her always <coughs> here are some pictures of how that build went and a quick little snippet video just to show you guys kind of what it turned out like so yeah I think I think everything went well there and we had ample time to actually do training and whatnot. I ended up actually driving back. I flew into Dallas. I ended up driving back to Dallas well before I needed to because it just felt like I had, you know, we were done. There was not, nothing else more that had to be done. So um, that was a good one. <clears throat> I'm starting to get a system down with these builds and, you know, how to build the countertops and set the computers up and do it quickly and efficiently. So. I'm excited to do this one here in Columbus next week. Actually, you know, literally next week I'm going to Raleigh, North Carolina for another build. So uh, that'll be the last one in June. I'll probably take a couple weeks off from doing those. Uh, I don't have anyone else signed up yet. It's not like I'm just choosing to take the two, two weeks off, but I don't have anyone else signed up yet. I, I have a couple that are about ready to sign up for July. So eventually I'm only going to be doing these like once a month, maybe. Uh, but right now, it's it's been fun doing these and it's like everyone who originally signed up for consulting is is finally getting the keys to their place and just you know being able to get in there and build the stores for them sorry driving in kind of rush hour traffic in seattle so yeah stay tuned i'm about 15 minutes out from the airport and i will keep you guys updated along the journey i'm gonna try to make this video a little bit more fun and a little bit more production value so we'll see how that goes all right so just 
back to the airport, get all my stuff ready. I've got a lot of questions about like people asking how I actually, you know, get tools and do stuff and you know actually bring the equipment to actually build the whole store. So I thought I'd show you guys a look at one of my bags. This is uh, a way for me to just use a normal handsaw. You can actually, you know, clamp it onto sheet wood and make perfect cuts every time. So these are really, really nice. I ended up getting a newer one that's longer, can do a whole eight foot sheets. Uh, so you can use just a normal handsaw like this. Got a new sander, cause mine was a piece of junk. Knee pads, uh, a battery powered nail gun for finishing. Couple drills, stud finder, a couple other types of saws, levels. You know, a bunch of screwdrivers, pliers, uh, caulking gun, speed square, so I can make sure everything's perfectly flush and 90 degrees. Uh, some tape, extra sandpaper. Yeah, kind of get the gist. So I'm able to pretty much bring everything in this bag here. This is my third try with a new bag because I, the first the first build I did, I brought a actual toolbox that had rolling wheels on it and they broke the handle and the wheel, so I had to carry it from the parking lot to the airport. This one you can see I brought it on the last trip to Louisiana. It's already getting scuffed up from them just like tossing it off the plane. So hopefully this one lasts a little bit. It is like kind of a hard shell duffel. I um, mean, it does have rolling wheels and whatnot, so hopefully this one works. I do have to keep it under 50 pounds so I don't have to pay a bunch extra. But I do usually have a ton of extra space in this my actual like clothing bag so it kind of works and i just put a couple of the extra saws that are heavy in here and it makes things easy <clears throat> one of the biggest pain points with these builds is that i have to bring all the batteries the drill batteries do have to be brought on the plane with you so i have this bag and oh, yes, i have some gloves in there i have all my drill batteries and there's about seven or eight of them so uh, yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but, uh, they always bring me into another room and are wondering why I have so many drill batteries, but I've, I've read all the rules. You can bring them on there. They just have to be a certain size. Um, you know, like this one here, if I can grab it. this thicker one here, the amp hour on it is four amp hours, 80 80 watt hours. So the max battery that you can bring on the plane is actually 105 watt hours, which is a pretty big battery, but some of them do go over that. So the whole point of this bag is that you do have to have all of them like where the terminals can't touch each other and start a fire. And so these, the big ones I have in the charger so they can't get loose. And then all the smaller ones that I have that are only like 50 and 50 watt hours. I have them wrapped up just so they don't give me any crap about it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna get going, go get these bags checked and go through security. So wish me luck. Hey everyone, sorry I skipped a few videos there. Uh, flew into Columbus, we landed at 5.20 Eastern time. So that is 2.20 a.m. my time. Not too feeling too bad. I think I got like maybe 30 minutes to an hour of sleep, so not feeling too bad. Um, went directly to Lowe's to get some of this wood here that you could see. I like going there and just buying the wood in person and having them split it in half. Uh, doing the two foot width or two foot depth box storage is, is perfect and it saves me hours of time not having to cut all that myself. So. It's nice to go there. It took me 30 minutes, had then cut that, came straight to the store, met the owner. He has all of the U-line boxes here and the Amazon stuff is actually at their house. We got one truckload of the uh, lumber from the purchase order. So, you know, a lot of these sticks were making him some pretty fun countertops using the two by ones and a lot of sheets of wood you can see there and all the two by fours. We're just waiting on a few more things that's supposed to come today. Sadly, is going to kind of put a wrench in me kind of getting started, but basically we'll walk you guys through how I'm envisioning the floor plan here. So this side will be like a customer. All right. Welcome to day two of the fifth store build out here in Columbus, Ohio. Got a lot, a lot to do. 
and kind of just getting started this morning. I forgot to even take some videos. So uh, just kind of structuring how the counters are gonna be. You can see we were looking at some of the counters last night, just making sure that we liked them before we went too crazy. So it's gonna be two of these basic L shapes, drops down where you'll have a scale on each side, uh, just getting everything cut out. We're gonna have, the counter will continue up on that wall and we're gonna have a small island here in the center. Mailboxes will go right there. And this side we decided it's just gonna be this blank wall. We're just gonna do like a giant grid wall there so they can have stuff for sale. So we'll get those hung. Um, over here we'll have the TVs up above the wall and box storage and packing station and that'll be pretty much it we got a lot of the industrial shorts racks to put together too but definitely going to take some time hopefully i can get most of it built today and then tomorrow will just be kind of loading in all the computer stuff and making sure all their systems are working we'll go from there so about an hour later it's about 10 a.m on thursday so the first first full day doing the build uh, you can see, got the counters pretty much going. We're going to do it a little bit differently here. They also chose back black. This is the third build that's choosing the black countertops. Um, got a trend going. So we're actually going to be doing like some stripes with this wood. So it'll be, you know, going across the whole front there. I think it'll look pretty neat. Um, that was their decision. <clears throat> yeah, we kind of got them going here. You can kind of see what it looks like where before everything's finished up. Just want to show you guys basically taking these prefab countertops from Home Depot Lowe's. Uh, definitely a good value where you actually get the, the cabinets already installed so it makes things a lot easier. And then adding the lower section framed so that it can support a good amount of weight and that's where the scales will go on each side. So if you can imagine, and I'm sure it'll be here in about a couple minutes in this video, will be, you know, computer, scale, scale, computer. So. That's kind of the goal here. Gonna finish things up hopefully before lunch and then go get some food and start doing the islands. So trying to get all the wood cutting done today. And then tomorrow just kind of ends up being like hanging things, setting the computers up and um, yeah, hopefully be all but done by tomorrow. So we have our full day Saturday to train. All right, so just a little update video. I've been horrible about taking videos uh, during this build, just kind of get in the zone, I guess. And yeah, so a lot's changed since I last did the update here. So let me show you around. Got our island here. Just got to paint it and put some trim around it so you can kind of hide those little, you know, where the two pieces of wood meet together. But super sturdy, could definitely hold a billion pounds. And we got a trash hole on the end there, trash cans underneath where they can have a cabinet on the other side and be able to get the trash out when they need to empty it. This island, the owner of the store requested that everything, you know, stay unmounted. So uh, this is kind of how, you know, this counter just got built so that it could possibly be an island. It can go against the wall, what have you. All you gotta do is paint it and do some trim on the sides there. So. A little bit of work left on that. Got our TVs up above. Just got to hide the wires, plug them all in. And move over to, oh, skipped one. Even though it's a blank wall. So over here, we got about 10 feet of room. This is where their mailboxes will go. We just got those ordered. Uh, not a huge deal if you don't have the mailboxes right when you're opening. You still could sign people up for mailboxes. You don't technically have to have physical mailboxes to keep their mail. Um, you can hold it behind the counter for the time being, you know, offer a special opening rate and uh, wait till your mailboxes come in and give them the keys to their assigned box once you do get them. So they should have those here in a few weeks. We got our counters, so I'll try to do more. I think they turned out pretty good. Kind of look like Ikea or maybe like a Chipotle, something like that. Um, definitely not the... I idea we had when we first started but that's just kind of how it turned out uh they did want white countertops and white baseboards but um the white countertops were not in stock so they decided to go with ash they do like it a lot so looks great everything's nice and flush and yeah they got two of them i know it doesn't look like it but it, i did measure it it's a four foot gap in between there 
So ample space to roll carts in and out and whatnot with boxes. These are the banners. Uh, we're waiting for approval from the landlord. Uh, I printed these for this build. Just waiting on the landlord's approval to actually hang them. Uh, they currently have a barber shop sign up right now. They're just waiting for somebody to come take it down. So uh, not much I could do there, but they got the coming soon sign. They'll be able to hang right when this other sign comes down and then they'll have the now open one and that'll suffice until they get like a permanent light up sign. I'm not the best designer, but I think it works. Looks good. And we got this one's going to act as our their main station to start. So got their Mettler Toledo scale and nice countertop here. And again, these are the prefab cabinets from Home Depot, Lowe's, they both have them. And basically just adding my own box here, I need to paint this still, um, but thankfully have a lot of time left. So they basically, I'm just building the lower section here. The prefab's already there. I mount the cash register under there, so they'll be able to get to that when they have cash payments. Have a little space there. Uh, that's something that they kind of requested. So, you know, if they want to do some office work or something like that, instead of having like a full blown office, if it's just, you know, it's just a solo owner, they kind of have a place where they can sit closer to the counter and like act like a desk right there. So pretty neat. And then this is also a prefab cabinet. Uh, just kind of have the counter going all the way across and it's nice and sturdy. Same exact thing on this side. Uh, again, you could have two people, you know, working like little offices here and you got all of the space there to do all that. So pretty neat. They do have a lot of white wall left, but you do get a lot of like posters and all kinds of decorations from the carrier. So I did tell them that and they'll have, you know, the walls filled up in no time. This is their fancy box storage I made for them. They ordered way too many boxes. That was partially my fault, but partially theirs because I said, call me first before you order it. But now they have a boatload of boxes. And wait, that's not all. We got more. <laughs> you actually can return stuff to Uline. So they, they did forget to order the bubble mailers, the poly bags, and some other types of envelopes. So they ordered those and Uline is going to actually, you know, take everything on this shelf here is, there's a lot of boxes that are just like two inches different than ones on their main storage area. So they'll have this empty storage shelf. They'll have one more empty storage shelf right there. And that'll act as like their, you know, where they can keep their mailbox customers packages, where they can store packages that are gonna go out later. And yeah, so. Uh, last but not least, kind of just have this bubble. We got our bubble wrap hanger there. Kind of looks crooked, but it's not. Or it's just kind of the bubbles. The rolls are not always straight, but got a, four extra rolls. Just kind of waiting to get all this stuff out and build one last shelf to store it there. And they have this kind of storage area in the back. Not doing anything back here, except I got to take all that garbage out. So that's going to be a real treat. And really all it is is just a bathroom and a, like a water closet with their water heater and whatnot. And then they have a little space here that they might do like a accounting services back here. So that's what I was told. So they'll be able to, you know, make like put a couple of desks back there and kind of have like a side office for that portion of their business. Oh, I forgot about this. And the landlord left this sweet hoop we might put over by the mailboxes <laughs> where the mailboxes are going to go for the time being just for fun. So pretty neat. But yeah, I think everything's looking pretty good. Just got to build one more shelf, do a little bit of painting and set up their computers. They didn't order the <clears throat> label printer, receipt printer, um, and they are going to get a computer and printer, just a normal printer right now. Uh, today's Friday, so um, kind of we'll cut in a little bit on our training time, but I don't fly out till 6 p.m., so we'll have pretty much, you know, 9 to nine to 3. It'll take me about an hour to set up all their computers and printers, and then uh, we'll, we'll still have, you know, five, six hours to do training, which is more than enough time. So looking forward to it. Store's coming along. And I will update you guys with the finished product. All right, so just a look at the finished product. Got to head out here in about 30 minutes. 
Got our grid walls here on the left with our banners. Never got the approval from the landlord. So I always say, you know, try to get all of the approval for your signage as early as possible, or even when you're signing a lease, just to, you know, expedite the process of getting everything done at once. Got an island here with our garbage hole cut out. Again, the back side is a cabinet so they can actually empty the garbage can. Move the uh, basketball hoop I mentioned up to the front here just to be a placeholder for the mailboxes. If some kids come in for, you know, their parents are ship, so, shipping something out, they'll have something to play with for the time being. Return pile, nothing fun there. Got uh, another island, able to move it around the store as they wish. Their TV's up above. When you're looking at the TV's head on, you really can't see those wires. Oh, yeah, you can. Probably should tuck those in. I'll have to tuck, zip tie those in a little bit better, but try my best to hide the wires. You can get the little sleeve that, you know, you stick on the wall and it hides the wire, but I usually just try to get a wire that blends in with the blends in with the wall so it's not too bad but TVs are all nice and straight they're all plugged in ready to go we'll back up here to get a look this owner had a computer available so really they just had to purchase the scale and the two printers and the barcode scanner but they just brought it in today. We got everything set up. I just got to hide the wires real quick before I go. We were making sure that the printers that they brought in actually worked because um, they're not the ones that I recommend, but we got them all set up. They seem to be fine. Got our counters here. I think the way we did them turned out pretty cool. Got some of my stuff. Got an HP all-in-one printer so it could do faxing, double-sided scans, 40 pages per minute, black and white and color, which is awesome. Super quick and just finished loading up their inventory so we're all set there got their air pillow machine ready to go box storage again nothing's changed there got our two shelves there got our cameras hung up got our bubble wrap hanger there probably move these in the back i just finished putting up this shelf we we decided to put the the black sheep of shelf, the red sheep of shelf in the back there. We got one shelf to take back, two shelf, two shelving units to take back. So those are expensive. They'll be able to get a little bit of money back. And yeah, got some stuff that they're gonna do in the back here. But other than that, another build done. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All right, so just landed back in Seattle, driving home wanted to do kind of like a recap video so <clears throat> the owner and the partner of the business were very happy with the build um, they actually had already recommended a couple other people to do the build and consulting and whatnot we got their store done well under the budget that I advertise so that was good they actually the owner brought up to me that they were surprised that you know they checked their bank statements and they were you know I think they said they were like eight thousand dollars under the budget that i had originally told them so you know, i'm glad we were able to get it done that way they were able to provide some of the pieces to the build on their own you know that they just had so that certainly helps but it's still good to see you know get staying under budget i haven't had one bill go over budget yet so i definitely try to aim high and surprise you with lower costs uh, it's just easier that way in case there's something that someone wants to build and they want you know higher quality materials or something like that should be still fall within the, the realm of the budget that i have set so yeah it's a good time um i'm definitely jet lagged you can already feel it it's still sunlight here but it's midnight where i came from so should be fun but i got another one next week i'll try to post this video before i head out to the next one uh, that's going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I will certainly have a video on that as well. So, catch you guys next time.